Welcome to the sixth week of the Business Management Capstone course. I'm going to try to keep the video shorter this week since now you already know the structure of the class. So let's go ahead and jump into the module for week six. I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the assignment summary. Obviously, you should always be watching the overview video, which you currently are. The module review is read chapter four and review the PowerPoint presentation for chapter four. And then for the assignments this week, you have the course participation, competitively important resources for companies, the chapter four, learn smart, a case study, which we have not done so far. So you have a case study on Whole Foods Market back in 2014, the Globus Simulation Year 8 report. The majority of the companies are doing fantastic. Keep it up. Keep in mind, you just don't always want to use the same style of the report. You want to mix it up. You want to keep on improving the reports, uh, but for most part, I'm very proud of this group. Fantastic. And the global simulation decisions for year eight. Now we're getting into where you're going to find out if you're making the right decisions and if, if what you're choosing is working or not working. Uh, so um, if you're not doing so well up to this point, make sure you're really applying what you're learning as you go and, and make the right decision for year eight. And last but not least, we have the quiz for chapter four. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. You know all about the course content within each module. The course participation this week is for competitive important resources, which basically means what are the tangible and intangible resources that are important to a company. So what you're going to do is you get to choose a company and you will identify those competitively important resources, tangible and or intangible. I'll give you two examples for me. I'm from the west side of Cincinnati. Preso Chile. Preso Chili has been there forever. The type of food they serve, same kind of food they serve everywhere that you can think of for the most part. With that said, I love Preso Chili. You know, I, I know my reasons, but without trying to give away too much information for the assignment, um, you really could analyze the tangible and intangible reason why a West Sider would go to Preso Chili. Now, if you're not from the West Side, you would probably say, what is he talking about? So I'll use something better. What about Starbucks? Tons of people go to Starbucks. I've been to Starbucks. I drink coffee. When it comes to Starbucks, I will share my opinion. Uh, it is truly overpriced coffee. I think it's good, but is it worth the cost? No. So why do people go there? Then again, I'm not going to give you that answer because that ties into the assignment. Is it the tangible or is it more intangible? So I, I would point you in, in the Starbucks situation, more intangible. The tangible, the coffee, yeah, it's good, but it, there's more than that that people are paying for overpriced coffee. Just kind of give you, you know, an idea of what I'm looking for here. So not only do you have to list, is it tangible, intangible, and what those are, you have to explain why you chose them. So you can't, you can't just list because the coffee's great. Well, what else to it? Okay, what makes it the best coffee? What, what proof do you have it's the best coffee? Um, or what intangibles, what relationships have they created that why people to Starbucks over other places. So step two of the assignment obviously is review the posts of your peers. And step three is provide a comment on at least two other posts. The replies must be engaging and meaningful. Like I said about the yearly reports, most of you are doing a great job. Same with these discussion board, the, the course participation assignments. Now with that said, there are a few of you who are just saying great job, you know, way to go. That's not a comment that I'm looking for. That's not engaging. That's not meaningful. That really doesn't show me that you read the post or not. Uh, so for just those minor few, make sure you are actually providing a meaningful and engaging comment, or I will begin to deduct more points because of that. But like I said, for most of you, great job and keep it up. So let me go ahead and scroll down. This is the same format we had to learn smart for chapter four. You're used to that. The quiz, you're used to that. The new one is the case study. Okay, so here's another new assignment. This is what I was saying at the beginning of the semester. It's easy the first few weeks because all we did is focus on Globus. Then we started doing Globus and the McGraw-Hill Connect assignments. Now we're adding another McGraw-Hill Connect assignment along with the Globus assignments. It's going to seem like a lot of work. Keep in mind, as I promised, it all evens out. It wasn't that heavy at the beginning. It will seem more challenging now, and then it will start tailing off at the end. I definitely took that in account. I'm not giving you 
crazy amount of, of work outside of what you know the credit hours of the courses uh, but it, it will become challenging to you with that said last semester there wasn't hardly anyone that had an issue with completing the case study just time consuming but you should be okay and if I go ahead and move down of course we have the year 8 report like I said before a lot of you are just it's fantastic I you know I'm at a loss of words I even put in some of your comments that some of the best year six reports I've ever seen. Uh, so you're, you're, you're already ahead of the game. I mean, your year six reports are looking like year 10 reports to me, some of you. And I made that comment, so you know who you are. So great job, you know, beautiful cover page. Uh, the, the content obviously addresses all the, the, the topics for the report. You might have included graphs charts, data to support your uh, information. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, I made a comment to each and every one of you, so there should be any guesswork what I'm looking for. I've been very easy on the grading initially because I, I want you to get a feel for the report because I did not get examples intentionally. So I've been easy on the grading, but now it's going to start tightening up because now you know what I'm looking for. All right. With that said, most of you are definitely on your way and some teams who have three who feel like this is overwhelming keep in mind there are some companies with teams of two that are knocking out a ballpark matter of fact last semester I had two teams of two and they outperformed all the other teams so keep that in mind if you're a team of three and you're feeling like you're overwhelmed and you don't know how you're going to be able to do all this work there's Within your group, with I mean, within your class, there are teams of two that are crushing it. So there really should be any excuses. But with that said, I'd, if I had to give it a ballpark percentage, I'd say a good 75% of y'all are just doing fantastic. So keep that up. And then last but not least, we have the year eight decisions. The reason why I say last is, pers if it was my preference, I would complete the year eight report first and then do the decisions. Now, this is just my preference. You don't have to do this th that way because the report gives you a chance to analyze what you're going to do for the decisions. Now, you don't have to view it that way. You can do your decisions and basically say, okay, well, my decisions will dictate what I put in a report. That's fine too. I'm just saying my preference would, the report would really help me analyze what I'm going to be up to for the year eight decisions. So real quickly, I know I touched on, on the video at the uh, very beginning of the course but under course content I obviously have the weekly modules I have the discussion board shortcut the global shortcut learn smart quizzes and cases so I always want you at least go one time into the weekly module to make sure you're getting all the information know exactly what you should be working on but then after that you can use these shortcuts to get to the assignments that's what they're there for so you don't have to keep on digging through the weekly module one, or well, actually two I want to point out. First one will be the quizzes. Okay, so once you access the quizzes, as you can see, you have additional information about the quiz. Obviously, like this one says, it's a chapter quiz. There can be multiple choice, true and false questions. Time limit is 50. Once the test has been started, it must be completed in the same sitting. And it even gives the due date. So just a, more general information about the assignment. So now if I go back up, and select cases and the case we'll be completing will be the Whole Foods one it gives you some information about it it states before beginning this exercise you will need to read the Whole Foods market case which is in the e-text it will also be helpful to review the tools and concepts in chapters 1 through 5 alright so keep that in mind you want to go ahead and, and review chapters 1 through 5 we're only covering up to 4 this week and you say well wh what about 5 then well 5 just at least basically you know briefly review it so you don't have to read the entire chapter uh, but it might be helpful to complete this case study what that said I like I said I didn't have any students have an issue with completing the Whole Foods case study last semester so it tells you there are four sections within the case study each section of the questions are worth 25 points they can be multiple choice or true and false questions total points is 100 and you'll be given two attempts to complete the assignment so you have two attempts just in case if something goes wrong the first time just getting used to the case studies uh, so multiple chances so really shouldn't be an issue but great information within there 
Okay, let's go ahead and jump into Globus to look at the results from year seven. Here's the scoreboard for year seven. As you can see, company I is leading charge with the weighted score of 107. They had a plus one change from year six. Company B is at 102. They had a plus six change. As you can see that they're catching up with uh, company I. Next, we have company D actually dropped six points to 92. And then you have 91, 90, 87, 85, 78, where I, I actually don't want to go too quickly because when I say 78, that's the aim and click company who were who was last uh, the previous year. And now they're making up ground. As, as you can see, they had the biggest jump at plus 18. So you may disregard their weighted average score and say, oh, well, they're at 78. They're not doing anything. But if you see the change they made from year six to year seven, so in my eyes, initially I would say, hey, they're figuring something out now to make that big of a jump because no one else did. Company F made the wrong jump uh, backwards, I should say, and uh, lost 28 points. So I would really watch yourself, uh, Company F. That's a big, big loss within one year. So maybe, maybe you're trying something new, and maybe you're going to re recoup it next year. So I don't want to be too negative about it, but just kind of, you know, be cautious, I would say. So great job. Now if I go down to the game to date scoreboard, pretty much all the same. Company I is still at 107. Uh, company B is 101. Company D is at 95 with a bonus point. Then we have 92, 91, so on and so forth. And all the way at the bottom, we have Company F at 68, Game 2 Date. So this is Game 2 Date score. This is the overall score that you want to look at each and every week uh, because this is who's going to win the competition. So yes, you want to pay attention to the yearly score to see what the outcome of the decisions that you made. But then obviously, you always want to come down and look at the Game 2 Date scoreboard to determine what place are you truly in. Now, I know we have a big difference between company I at 107 and company F at 68. But what I would tell you is there's still a lot of time. Okay, you already seen that another team made a plus 18 jump. So you can do the same and catch up very quickly. All it would take is company I to make a misstep and they could drop 10, you know, 10 points very quickly and be, you know, below 100. Or Company B could drop. So keep that in mind. No one's out of it yet. So Company F, you know, continue, you know, dig deep into the manual, you know, look at all the reports to try to understand how you can catch up. Moving on to earnings per share, return on equity, and stock price. Earnings per share, everyone's meeting expectations except two companies that's company a at 169 and company f at 107 everyone else is meeting expectations fantastic job company i is leading the charge no big surprise they're leading the game too what i would say is with company a even though that at 169 and they're, they're not meeting the expectations right now as you can see they improved them from year six to year seven so that's where in business you can't just look at one data point. You got to understand, you know, are they moving up? Are they moving down? So company A, that's a great job. You're, you're moving in the right direction. Now company F, on the other hand, last year met expectations. This year they dropped. So company F, please watch yourself. Moving on to return on equity. As you can see now, though, company B is has the best return on equity. Everyone met expectations except company F again, and they had another pretty big drop so you know I, I hate to keep on saying it but you know please watch yourself company F you, you don't want to continue on if I see that in year eight I will definitely be concerned about you so then if we look though like look at company A though they went from 13.1 year six to 22.9 in year seven and they're meeting expectations so to me it seems like company A is figuring it out even though they're at the bottom they're getting it together. So what I would tell the rest of the companies is watch out. They can easily catch you. We still have a lot of years in front of us. Next we have stock price. Everyone meets expectations. Company I leading the charge with 160, which the only one that's close is company B with 126. So great job company I. Keep it up. The only concern here, obviously, I'm going to say is Company F. They're not meeting expectations, and they went from year 6 at 40 to year 7 at 16. 
So I'm hoping to see something better year eight for company F. Maybe they're just trying something and that's what's causing the dip, which could definitely be the case. Okay, moving on. Credit rating. As stated in previous videos, I thought everyone would be okay. And this is proof we're only at year seven and everyone's either at A or A minus. So fantastic. Moving on to image rating. Everyone's meeting expectations except company A and F. So company A, they moved up a point, going in the right direction, great job. Company F took a dip, so I, same applies here. Please watch yourself, company F. Then company E, they went up. So they were best in show in year six, and they have the best in year seven. So great job with not only holding, holding that lead, but increasing it. So now we're going to move on to the comparative competitive efforts. And of course, we'll just look at North America. Make sure you're looking at all the different regions, though. So quick glance here. If we're looking at price, the average is 311. As we can see, there has been some adjustments with the price. So either A, they've been watching the videos and been paying attention. B, they've been reading the manual. Or C, they just figured it out on their own, one or the other. So you can see the, the prices are a little bit closer now than what we initially seen in the practice rounds in year six. It looks like on the high end, we have 450 on with company B. And then on the low end, it looks like company E at 245. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. Uh, company G at 225 on the low end. So then what would pique my interest said, oh, I wonder what the PQ rating then is. So if you see on average, it's 5.2. Company C has the highest at 5.8. Then we have B and A at 5.7. So I'm looking at the prices and I'm like, wow, Company C has 5.8 PQ rating and a cost of 275. Interesting. Okay. And then we have some, uh, Company F has the lowest, it looks like the PQ rating at 3.9. Is that hurting them? Could be, or it could be some other different factors. It's, it's never going to be just one data point. So next we got the different models. It looks like on average there's roughly two. On the high end we have company G with four. The warranty period, it looks like it stayed pretty much the same. The highest we have is 180. And then if we glance down at market share here real quickly, it looks like the market share uh, leader would be company E. And then I want to go all the way up to the top and say, okay, well company E has the largest market share. What's their price point? And they're selling at 245 with a PQ rating of 5.1. Makes sense to me why they might have the highest market share. And without going too deep into it, you all want to look at all these different um, stats here to try to figure out your competition. Because if you have a similar PQ rating and you're asking for more money, I'm going to say, well, what's the difference? There has to be another difference in your product. You know, is it brand reputation? Is it the, the retail support? Is it advertising? You know, are you building a brand? What is it? So moving down to the drone segment. The averages for the price is roughly 1400 It looks like the highest is company B at 2000 So then we look at it here with the PQ rating. They only have five. And they're selling it for 2000 the models they have two okay so I'd be a little bit curious about this and then I would say well who else has a higher PQ rating so company A 54 then you have 55 and 54 would come H and I so then I would say okay well what are they selling for company A selling for 1600 then you got 1400 and then you have 1250 so company B is on, obviously on the high end and the PQ rating is not that high so if I go all the way, and I'm going to jump down all the way to the market share, and I'm going to say, well, let's see how that's working out. Because if you can sell it for more, you don't have to sell as many. It looks like the leader is company G at 12.4, and then we have D and E at 12. And company B, their market share is only 6. Being that it's only 6, it would be interesting to, to see if they made a, maybe some adjustments and I'm not saying just price, they could go models and so on and so forth, so it's not just price. If they could capture more of the 
market share. And then if they could, then they could turn a, a larger profit, obviously, with charging, with charging a higher price point than the other competition. All right, so that's all I have for this week. Please reach out to me if you have any questions. Take care, everyone.